בוא. היי אבריבאדי, הלו רונה, הלו אסי, this is the first three person video for Got Academy, I feel like we are doing ground breaking things here on Got Academy. So you are here because you have an application that analyzes data from TV shows and movies, like who is in the scene, what is in the scene, what are they talking about, and from that data you can extrapolate all kinds of things to learn more about the stories. And since Game of Thrones is coming up, we're going to talk about your application a bit more uh, later, we want to use the data that you have on your application, Vivi, in order to know if my predictions are right, <laughs> basically. Yes. Basically, we want to know if the data is good or if the data is bad, because <laughs> the, 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 the predictions, predictions are, are bad. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. the constant. <laughs> let's see, let's see if your data fits the bill. And you have looked into the data, you have mined the data <laughs> exactly. of the show. Maybe tell us a little bit how you did it and what did you come up with. All right. So basically, we uh, build a um, uh, platform that allows us to break down every episode in every um, TV show or movie and tag content into it. So in fact, for example, for example what's the location that, you're, that the scene is uh, shot in? King's yeah. Landing, Heron Hall, yeah, whatever. Exactly. Okay. So filming location and the uh, diagetic locations of the story. Um, who are the characters? What are, sometimes what are they wearing in Game of Thrones? It's less relevant, other shows maybe more. What are they talking about? All the internal references, um, a mm. lot of text, a lot of uh, textual references, winter is coming. Uh, Catchphrases, okay. And then you take all that data. You can search for anything in Game of Thrones okay. and know exactly where it appeared, when, who was in that scene. And, and what will happen later. Yeah, and you can have, and you can make comparisons, you know, between characters or between locations okay. or between Themes. Let's go for it. Let's go All for right. it. Magic. So the first thing, magic. yeah, so the first prediction you had was that, you know, Game of Thrones, you had magic coming into the story from the beginning and growing and growing and right. growing. Mm -hmm. You've always seen those who smirk at magic, you know, this is just uh, nan old Nan's uh, right. uh, bullshit stories. Do the dead frighten you? Grumpkins and snocks and all the other monsters your wetness warned you about. Giants fighting for it. Giants. That does seem far more likely than magic birds talking to cripples. <laughs> Don't forget the prophet Lodos, who promised that the drowned god would rise up and destroy Egon the Conqueror. Oh, uh, <laughs> Lodos. <laughs> and those who shit their pants. Blood of my blood. And then uh, you predict that in season eight there will be some kind of a decline and the like new world... Sudden will, decline. Yeah, and the new okay. world will come and there will be more knowledge and more... Okay. Uh, and I don't know what the data says about you it. You don't know what the data okay. says. So I will show you what Ooh, the data says Ooh, but Silent Bob, it. do you have anything to add here? <laughs> um, yeah, let's see the data first. Okay, let's, let's see the data. data, let's see the data. All right, okay. so here we see a graph Ooh. of all the magic in the world. Dragons, direwolf, faceless men, uh, the Lord of Light. White Giants. walkers, white, yeah. three-eyed ravens, warging, children of the forest, okay. warlocks, anything that is not... Real. Real. <laughs> and you see that there's a really steep, um, you know, uh, graph going up. These are seasons. Each one uh. of these is like the seasons. Like it's from season one to season seven. I'm going to the prediction oh. of season eight. Oh, so, okay, okay, okay. First of, all, first of all, there's a dip in season four. Yeah, yeah, there's a dip. And wait, you haven't seen it all yet. Now I'm going to add knowledge into the story. So I'm going to type knowledge and I'm going to add it into the graph. And now, what, what, I, what I clustered under knowledge was um, the Citadel uh -huh. and all the maesters, because okay. they represent knowledge in, right. in uh, Westeros. Okay. Um, and Sam, of course, because even though he's not you know, officially a maester, right, right, he right. does represent right. knowledge, right? right? So we've got Sam, we've got maesters. I do have here Kyburn, which is good. Who is, no, it's good. Uh, it's yeah. I, I believe so. We'll talk about him later. He about really extends. Like, yeah, we can talk about Kyburn later. Okay, let's leave it um, later. Okay. But we we'll leave it. But we can look at we can look at it without Kyburn, and okay. we see that he does make a okay. little bit of a difference. Okay, okay. And you see what happens in season four? Ooh. There's there's the like same, they meet. Same. Okay. 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 So first of all, why does the magic deep in season four? What happened in season four? 
Season four is the season with uh, Tyrion and uh, Oberyn. Oberyn, Oberyn yeah, yeah, and the trial, the comedy of trial. Two stories, we had like the King's Landing, the trial, the big mm-hmm. trial, and we had in the Essos, you know, she was like Maureen Marin already trying to understand the politics and everything. It was not about the dragons. I will not sail for Westeros. What then? I will do what queens do. I will rule. It was a season about politics and about, you know, uh, like uh, trials and... Uh, this is why I like this season. <laughs> <laughs> I like this season. Okay, and then... What you can see from this graph very nicely is that when, uh, when the magic is up, the knowledge is down. So we have two peaks of magic ah, and one peak mostly in, in, in terms of the knowledge. Oh, and if we're looking towards eight and we go like the coming the two lines together, uh, we are still, we're in the downfall of magic, like you said. They are already upward. the downfall of magic? Yes, yes. there has seven. been a decline, you know. Right. <laughs> so if we see this as kind of like a trend of stuff, you know, so this trend is coming down the magic, and like you said, and the knowledge is going up, and if we try to put like that, the two lines together, season eight will probably mean kind of like the meeting again, around like what it was in season four. Or what I predict is that the magic will disappear, so we just like, fall off a cliff immediately. <laughs> no more magic. That is possible. But at the end of the story, episode one, season nine. Yeah. The knowledge itself will start to prevail to this kind of... Or maybe control magic. You know, when we talk about history of humankind, mm. um, every time uh, we got to a point in uh, uh, history where we don't understand what's going around the world, we invented magic, we invented God, right. we invented, right. you know, things that we don't... Water is coming from the sky, we must oh have goodness. done something good or bad, <laughs> right? right? But then knowledge came in and we started to understand why things are happening around and we couldn't control them. It doesn't mean that they didn't happen. It just meant that we were able to explain them, control them, you know, use them. Y- you were saying that magic, you know, may disappear or and knowledge will take over. And I don't see it that way. I think that with knowledge, we will be able to see um, the ability of some people in Westeros to control magic for their own use. To have magic control not out of, out of control like it is today. You know, like the dragons, they just do whatever they want, nobody can tame them. Kyburn is like, uh, he was from the Citadel and he was like banished from the Citadel because he was doing like uh, stuff that was not uh, allowed. Like uh, Leonardo, Leonardo Da Vinci kind of, you know, character. Okay. He's like, he's like... Uh, Narcophil uh, Leonardo Da Vinci. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. he's, he, but he was doing it on live people, you know. And, uh, uh-huh. Like Da Vinci was doing it on dead people and that's why he was like, uh, he had to do it in secret. And he was Ooh. doing a lot of stuff like on uh, weapons, actually. And if you know, like, uh, like he, was, he was the first one that had like a tank drawn, like the idea of tanks. A tank? I saw a submarine he had. He had a helicopter then, but also that he was commissioned to do a lot of like weapons for and uh, doing a lot of oh, stuff. Okay. So this like talks about the scorpion kind of thing that he does. Right. And it's like, he's like this very uh, knowledgeable person. He's actually more, more knowledgeable than the maester. Uh, may, may I ask what you, what you think you're doing? Saving him. He's avant-garde. He's pushing, yeah, the, he's envelope. pushing the envelope. And it's not magic. Everything's right. done, he's doing from right. time of knowledge. Right. Yeah. Uh, Paisel says something, I think uh, it's black magic, or some people refer to what he's doing as black magic, but usually people say black magic when they don't understand what mm. some. Right. There's doing. this concept called like the God of the Gaps. What we don't know, we say this yeah. is God. Yeah. Exactly. And the more we know, then God s- slowly retreats. So you think your prediction is that at the end, the magic will not be destroyed, but what we classify as magic will be w- reclassified as like, something yeah. else. When, oh, when he was like meeting, you know, those in the dragon picture of the meeting, mm. and that, you saw the white, what was coming, and everybody was like frightened and everything, and Kyburn was like, hmm, interesting, and you know. Picks up the and he picks up the hand, and, and the hand is like this, and go, how does this work? It's not like, it's not like this is, this is magic. Like, Knowledge you know, is his works. main driver. Like, so what do you think doesn't about care about them? Cersei or the throne or whatever. He just wants, you know, to know right. more. To get a grant yeah. to do some research. Exactly. We met him the first time. You see, you can see um, Kyburn, and we mm. see that the first time we met him was in um, season, season, one. season three, episode season one. Three, oh. <laughs> What's your name, friend? Kyburn. We're lucky to be alive. And everyone's slaughtered by the mountain. Lucky. And Cersei sees that spark in him that he's only driven by, by this knowledge. Like he doesn't care about his ego, about impressing anyone around him. He's just obsessed with that. 
So it's like it's really really interesting, right? It's the same mountain that you know yeah. that was almost died by this mountain. Now he's like saving him, maybe you can see, it, but it's not really saving. But this him, is right? exactly the point. He saw the power of the mountain and the destructive force of the mountain. He's using that power for whatever he wants. May I have the honor of presenting the newest member of the King's Guard? And then we see two more things that I want to um, that I want to note. Okay. Okay. Season five, episode two. Not him. Take the head. Pardon me, Your Grace. I would take it if you don't mind. It could prove useful for my work. He wants to learn, right? Uh, um, flesh, anatomy, uh, dead bodies. He's he's studying them constantly. I think that's very important to he's remember because something. I think that he wants to learn how to control the force of the White Walkers, of the Whites, of how to control the, this magic that is death, really. So and there's no one in Westeros who understands death better than him. Better than Kyber. Maybe John. John. Uh, he died. He, he, this is like an academic knowledge. Okay, so you read about death. I died. Yeah, <laughs> yeah he understands it in his body. <laughs> I, I believe I have a prediction that he has a lot to do with the demise of Cersei. That's, that's really what? what? The demise of Cersei. Yeah. Mm. Like everybody's talking about how Cersei is going to die or what's going to happen. My prediction is like this. I think that, uh, you know, there's like this uh, idea that, uh, of course, Tyrion or someone or Jaime is going to... Uh, prophecy, whatever. The way I see it, we have like this season, right? In terms of now, I'm talking about TV, like what we have. Mm -hmm. We have the season, we have like two places it's going to happen. We have the North and we have King's Landing. It's right. Two places. Right. And in the North, it's everybody. It's everybody we, we right. love and every, all the characters. From right. there, it's like in the beginning, it's going to be like, hey, hello, hello, yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah. yeah, you killed my father. Still a <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah, you killed my father. You killed my father. You killed my father. <laughs> Prepare to die. And like, okay, that's what's going to happen. And in, in the South, it's going to be like just this like King's Landing, empty place, right? Only Cersei and we have... Kyburn. Kyburn, and we have the mountain maybe with like just nothing, it's not a character even anymore. Okay. So okay. I don't think that even that all these characters are gonna make it so much. I think at the end, I think episode, yeah, episode I think the last episode. The last episode. I, mean, yeah, the I think that, uh, you know, when she kills someone, right, she always says, oh no, this is too good, this is too good for you. And then she lets them, you know, the way she did with Elari's son, or the, 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 the and nun, then, and the nun from Elia Elia Elia. and her daughter, yeah. yeah right. It's always, no, this is too good for you, we're gonna take your time. She this likes to watch, time. she likes to watch the people who hurt her suffer. So you think that Kyborn will do that to her? No, I think that Kyborn will have a key, a key role in this, but I think that the most thing, what, what's the worst thing that Cersei can that happen? It's not this, for, of course not. Right. It's not even, you know, uh, shame, you know, she's already been, I can't know how shame she, right. it's not, you don't know, that's not it. The thing that she really wants is power, you know, and, and to rule, right? She, wa she right. wants to have this power. She wants, she, she wants, maybe being a slave, that's the worst thing that can happen. I right? think that, no, I think the worst thing that can happen to her is like, if you strip down her power slowly, 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 and like the, the prophet says, strangle her. Like the way that the power of King's Landing is going to just decline. She's going to be to rule on nothing. That's what I believe. I think that what will happen is after the war, we'll have a, a second place that will be like the main power. And th this power I think will Heron be... Hall. It's going to be like every, the power is going to go to there. And King's Landing is just going to be emptied out. You know, the Iron Throne that everybody's talking about is there, this really big throne. Who's going to sit there? I think it won't matter because the Iron Throne itself has as a place of power is going to demise. Like That's that a taste. beautiful, beautiful prophecy. Yeah. I, I hope it happens. You know, I hope it happens. Uh, okay, so tell us a little bit about Vivi. So Vivi really is like, um, you know, a smart Shazam for television, you know? Okay. Like everything you want to know about what you see or hear on television, Vivi can tell you what it is. I think in Game of Thrones, the main focus here is text and references and you know what they said and what that means. And all these things can be linked into the show. Okay, but it's not only for Game of Thrones. No, no. it's for any show. I but mean, uh, when we talk about IMDb, so it's uh, like this content, you know, it's extra diegetical content. It's like the actors, right? We're talking about the characters, things that are inside the story. story. Right, and story. we're talking about content that is from users, from uh, content that was made by users, not made by the networks and by the, the show contributors. It's more something that is from the fans themselves. The, okay. What fans are saying, what fans are putting out on the internet, we think that this uh, this kind of content should be like really accessible and open. We're just linking it to all the fans out there who already found, you know, where this was shot in, why is that important, and we're just linking it into the show itself. So, 
So you can go in and, you know, and not just get the information relevant to the scene, but you can also go after the show and, you know, search for something and then see all the scenes that it appeared in. So I can do it during, during the show. Yeah. While I'm watching the show, I can see through your app what is going on in the episode. In the scene, in the scene. In the very scene itself, yeah. who is playing in the scene? Yeah. How, is, how can people get that? Where is it? People who want that. It? I want that. How can I get that? Please, right, give it to me. Click this link. There is a link. <laughs> <laughs> and okay, and through the link, I can get the VV app. Yeah. Okay, so thank you everybody for watching. Thank you, Rona. Thanks for having uh, us. You are ah, leaving sorry, me yeah. hanging to dry <laughs> in there. And we'll see you all next time. Thank you, patience, for supporting the channel. Bye, everybody.